This week on The Perfect Scam. I try to just change my voice and do different accents and things just to sort of switch it up or, you know, it started out of almost necessity because if I called the same place a few times with my voice, they would know who I was and they'd just hang up, right? Well, if I called back and I tried to talk with a little bit different accent or, or, or whatever, now they might put up with me. And then I realized, oh, well, I can, if I can make my voice sound old, maybe I could pitch shift it a little bit higher. And now I, you know, now I sound uh, like a different character. Welcome back to The Perfect Scam. I'm your host, Bob Sullivan. It started out as pure curiosity and a way to avenge his grandparents who'd both been victims of scams. It turned into a YouTube channel with 3.3 million subscribers and tens of millions of laughs, all at the expense of online criminals trying to steal from vulnerable people. He's turned scam baiting into performance art, but along the way, a man who calls himself Kit Boga has become much more than a viral celebrity. He's wasted years worth of criminals' time. He's helped return money and hijacked accounts to victims. And he's taught a lot of viewers how online scams really work. So let's meet him, let's laugh with him a bit, and then let's learn what he has to teach us. My name is Kit Boga, and I spend a lot of my time investigating scammers, and I try to play the perfect victim so I can waste their time and, and collect information about what they're doing. In this clip from his show, Gitboga has a criminal on the edge of his seat thinking he's only a click or two away from transferring all the money out of a victim's bank account. But one of those frustrating password reset screens stands in the way. Three different scammers at my bank with millions of dollars in it and see if they'll put up with a password game. These guys will usually do just about anything to rip someone off. So it'll be good to get a little revenge while we waste their time and collect some other information. Make sure you put the correct online password which you use to log into your bank, okay? If, if it was Apple 1234, now that's easy. The three scammers I'm talking to today think everything's going according to plan. But after I show them my balance, I'm gonna tell them my password's expired or I'm locked out. Oh, shoot. No, sir. Oh, God, it's not again. For, everyone, not again. Okay? for your security. God, I, I, this happened to me once uh, before. This isn't a normal bank, though. They're playing the password game. Okay. Yes, you need to set your, you need Hold to reset your password. No worry. Hello. And resetting the password goes even worse for the criminal than it normally does for you and me. I, can't, I, bet, I bet a robot can't guess that password. You gotta be smart. Your password must include a two-letter symbol from the periodic table. What the heck is that? It should be N-A. That's... N-A. That's, uh, what is that stand? N. N-A? Go for uppercase N, then lowercase A. Your password must include the current phase of the moon as an emoji. Moon as an emoji. Where I can get the emoji, man? That is a good question. Your guess is as good as mine. Oh, look! So it's auto-completing. This is a fairly crazy way to spend your time. How did you get here? Yes, there are some days where we, myself and the team, look at each other and say, is this really what we do for a job? <laughs> but it started off small. It's just something I was passionate about. I heard about tech support scams probably seven years ago. And my grandmother uh, had dementia. My grandfather had Alzheimer's. And they had been taken advantage of quite a bit. So when I learned about tech support scams, as a millennial who was a software engineer at the time, I, I'm thinking to myself, if I didn't know tech support scams existed, surely my grandparents wouldn't. And surely my parents wouldn't. And that was this kind of spark of maybe I could do something about it. Maybe I could investigate or tell people about it. And I think it took me about five minutes to get on the phone with the tech support scammer. It wasn't very hard to find one. And they asked if they could get on my computer, at which point I hung up and I wasn't prepared for that. But I, I ran over to my wife and told her all about these scams. And it was just 
Yeah, this spark, something that I had to do something about. So he started by setting up a computer especially designed to protect him from the criminals he'd be talking with. And let me stop at this point and say, we do not recommend you try this at home. Gitboga is a professional and now has a whole staff. So he then starts calling criminals, pretending to participate in whatever scam they want, and wasting their time. I set up a virtual computer, virtual machine, and I knew a little bit about how to do that from my tech background, figured out how to call scammers without using my actual phone number. Because I knew, okay, well, I can't call them with my phone and my real name and my actual address and all these. I, I kind of knew I had to obfuscate some of that. But I also was just talking to my friends about it a lot. Uh, it was just, you know, when you have a hobby or something you're really interested in, that, that tends to be what you're conversing with everyone about and right. th and that's sort of where all this was born because one day they said i don't know if they really said okay shut up stop talking about it but they they said okay stream it put it on hmm. twitch.tv so we can watch instead of just telling us all these stories we want to we want to like see it his friends want to watch so he starts streaming these sessions live where a few people can tune in to watch his shenanigans and I, th so I think what happened is one of them put it on Reddit somewhere and they shared this clip and I didn't know. And then I would usually stream maybe once a week on like a Sunday night or when I had some free time and I went back, you know, the next Sunday night or something to, to stream. And I told a couple of my friends, Hey, I'm, I'm going to go live. And there were like 20 or 30 people there all of a sudden. Mm. And that was, I ran out to the car and my wife had some aviator sunglasses <laughs> and I put them on because I like, I don't want people to see me. I don't want people to know who I am. Why are people here? Like it was a very unexpected moment where like, why are there all these people watching me? And it kind of grew from there. I'm like, oh, okay, people actually are interested in watching this. And yeah, that's kind of the history of now this is my job. <laughs> from a few friends to millions of YouTube subscribers. But some things haven't changed since he got started about six years ago. The disguise has not become much more sophisticated, though, it seems. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> Sometimes I put a wig on just for fun. But, uh, yeah. But the uh, the glasses are your, uh, are, are, are your... That gets you in character, I suppose, right? Yeah. And he doesn't disclose his real identity. Now, where does the name Kit Boga come from, if you could tell me? It's just an old... I used to play a game called Age of Empires, and there was a, a civilization, the, the Mongols, like the Mongolian, and, and they... One day I was playing, and if you've ever played this game, a really bad strategy would be to send catapults one at a time to, to your base. And that's what that computer player did. And its name was Kit Boga. I think I misread it. I think it's actually with like a Q or, mm. you know, it's like a mistranslation between, I feel bad, I don't know the original language to English, but so t I think Kit Boga in some form is a Mongolian warlord. <laughs> I did not <laughs> know. I just thought it was funny and it sort of accidentally became my brand now. And while his grandparents inspired his vigilante streak, the more performative aspects of his calls are inspired by his father. Not that I'm necessarily condoning or supporting this. Uh, or the Back in the day, I remember we would get sales calls and my dad would just put it on speakerphone and all my siblings and I would, like, we'd just sit in the living room and basically make prank calls right to one of the sales <laughs> it was in your so, blood now i see yes <laughs> yeah my dad would be yelling you know give me that knife in the in the background and we would <laughs> it was just to try to make chaos for the for the sales calls but i it was sort of like that well okay i could stream it live and now my friends can can hear it like it's on speakerphone and and that's sort of how i thought of it early on was me and some friends sitting in the living room talking to a scammer. But then eventually it, I, I think what happened is 
one day I had been playing guitar and having a scammer sing the boot scoot boogie, that country song with me. I'm sorry, are you wonder if I do any what? Do, do you sing at all, Patrick? Oh yes, I do. I do. But what kind of what kind of stuff do you uh, like to sing, Patrick? Uh, well, I can, sir. To be very honest, I am a music lover, okay? And uh, I listen to any kind of music, and I sing any kind of music. And that gave a spark of an idea to Kit Boga, to take his routine to the next level. On camera, he pulls out a guitar. Okay, you you like. You like a country music at all? Right, yes. John Denver and everyone, yes. Okay, yeah, I'll tell you what. I, so I got yeah. a taste of every kind of genre. Yeah, I'll tell you what, one of my favorite songs ever, by far, mm -hmm. is the Boot School and Boogie. You ever heard that one? Sorry, which one you said? It's called the Boot School and Boogie. You heard that one? I apologize. It's like a heel toe, dose to door. Come on, baby, let's go, boot scooting. Have you heard that one? Oh, you're playing guitar. Yeah, I, you know, that's something I do quite a bit. I, you know, it's like a Cadillac, Black Jack, baby, meet me out back. We're gonna boogie. I just, I, I'm sorry, I tell you what, Patrick. You know, whenever I find a music lover, I just, I got to, you know, share in that. It's a, it's a passion of mine, too. You know, that, now, now is that a song? You're an amazing singer, sir. Yeah, yeah, you want to, uh, you want to sing along maybe just for a minute while we run this scan? We can go, uh, at the, the very end of this, my favorite. Uh, click on yes, sir. Okay, yeah, 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 my favorite part right here at the end of the course, it goes, uh, oh, get down, turn around, boogie town, boo, scoo, boogie. Right, uh, sir, can you click on yes on the computer? And yes, eventually Kit Boga gets to do his duet. Okay, yeah, it, look, it looks like maybe, uh, is, it, is this what you wanted? You wanted to just run, run, run a scan or something? That's right. Uh, right now, uh, it is currently running a scan and removing any sort of malicious file that would be there onto the computer. So don't worry. Okay? All right. Yeah. I mean, it looks like it's going to take a minute. Maybe we could try to uh, sing that chorus one more time. What do you think, Patrick? Sure, but I don't know the lyrics, sir. You you go ahead and sing. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, the, well, the very well, the very last part it says, "Oh, get down, turn around, go to town, uh -huh. boop." Scootin' Boogie. You got that? Get down. Turn around. Get down. Go turn around. Yeah, go to town. Boot, scoot, boogie. Get down, turn around, go to town. Boot, scoot, and boogie. So it's like a get down, turn around, go to town. Boot, scoot, and boogie. <laughs> get right. down, turn, turn around. around. Go to town, boot, scoot, and boogie. <laughs> All right, yeah, I like that. Now, I'm going to add the guitar this time, okay? So we're going to go. Sure. Here we go, here we go. Get down, turn around. Get down, go, turn, turn around. Go to town. Boot, scoot, and boogie. Boogie. <laughs> this is nice, sir. Patrick, I, yeah, you have a, you have a pretty good... That clip is from 2017. Kit Boga's production and his sense of humor and his staff have only grown since then, and his audience has grown right along with him. Yeah, so we've had live streams that I would say there's some probably somewhere between like seven to ten thousand people who watch live, but the, but that accounts to maybe like a hundred thousand people throughout the day because. You know, some people only watch for an hour or something. But then on YouTube, the views are in, just in the millions where some of these videos have 8, 10, 13 billion, million views. And then when you add them all up together, it's hundreds of millions of views. So You were a software guy when you started this, and now hundreds of millions, millions of people have seen hundreds of millions of, of your forms of art. Yeah. How does that feel? It's... um. Sometimes it's very surreal. It's like a, I still feel like just a random guy, you know, like I, I never really set out to be 
some popular internet person. Well, per sons, the number of fake voices Kid Boga uses, actually, and entire personalities, is rather staggering. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I try to just change my voice and do different accents and things just to sort of switch it up. Or, you know, it started out of almost necessity because I would call the same call center. Usually I did this at night and there would only be one or two places open. Lots of them are open during the day in the U.S. because they're, you know, banks are open <laughs> in the U.S. And during the day, not at 11 p.m. or something. And if I called the same place a few times with my voice, they would know who I was and they'd just hang up, right? Well, if I called back and I tried to talk with a little bit different accent or, or, or whatever, now they might put up with me. And then I realized, oh, well, I can, if I can make my voice sound old, maybe I could pitch shift it a little bit higher. And now I, you know, now I sound uh, like a different character and, and I could I just learned different ways to do accents and <laughs> voice. Yeah, um so this is the um, original uh Edna sound with something like this. And, and I she's just a dear old you see I make the phone sound older as well. She's kind of an amalgamation of my grandma my stories that my parents told me about their great grandparents or things I remember that that they would talk about. So sort of all of my family stories sometimes get merged into. So and I think that really helps add like to the whole thing. My my grandparents were using a you know literal answering machine. If for those of you who remember what answering machines are and older phones, so that's what I think of. I, her granddaughter. Uh, Nevea, which is heaven spelled backwards, um, sometimes comes into the mix. Uh, There's a guy named, I normally call him Tony, I guess, but he, he ends up getting into all kinds of sticky situations. Uh, and, and, and then the, the counterpart, Bernice Andes, which if you say quickly sounds like Bernie Sanders. But Bernice, you know, she, I say, is somewhere between. Long Island in Boston, because I have no idea what this accent is. But she, I don't know. It's it's funny because they these characters have like lore to them. So she technically is a, a she's a doctor. Well, she says she's a doctor anyway. Uh, I have a theoretical degree. Is is what she says. So sort of each character, <laughs> as time goes on, they pick up. For whatever reason, things that we thought were funny just sort of sticks with them. So Richard Andrews, the, the, this this voice, you know, my older male character, he ends up kind of being the guy who who comes up with weird business ideas and thinks he's he's confidently incorrect about everything. And and sometimes that leads to then even like romantic type scams or or like weird times where the scammers will flirt with me or we find romance scammers are like into one character and not the other or whatever. So there's, yeah, it's a, it's a whole world. That was fantastic, by the way. You should, uh, you could just do a show <laughs> of that. Um, especially your ability to switch in and out of them very quickly is remarkable. I appreciate it. So there, I don't know if I could do it on the fly without, maybe I'd, I'd almost have to have like a prompt or a story, but I've, I've gotten better over the years too. Why does Kit Boga have all these well-developed characters? Really just to, well, I guess it's twofold. One, I find it entertaining or interesting to just come up with stories and, and tropes and see if the scammers will listen to them. Like it extends the time. So, for example, if I spend 15 minutes or an hour or 10 hours on the phone with a scammer, that's and hours that they weren't talking to a potential victim. They're talking to me. So sometimes I gotta, I gotta talk. <laughs> I gotta <laughs> fill time. So I'll tell stories. The other thing about it is I think it makes my character more believable. So if I, if I call scammers with my actual voice like this and I just talk about my, my daily life, 
they will hang up on me pretty quick because I sound like a, I don't know, I tend to sound like a tech savvy guy, I think. But if I, if I can play it off, like I am not so tech savvy and maybe I, I am a bit, I don't know. Um, oftentimes the scammers will say to me, you remind me of my grandmother. And that's kind of a, a, a cue that I know I've done a good job. I know mm -hmm. that I've, uh, at least they think that I'm, uh, <laughs> well, they, they smell, targeting. they smell blood. Yeah. Yeah. And your bait has been taken. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. And if you think of the whole thing as a theatrical performance, well, the scam caller is a character too, even if they have no idea. Normally I have like the, the scammer will sometimes interject as well. And so there's like this, <laughs> you know, an improv, you've, uh, people have probably heard of the like yes and type yes. thing of improv. So, well, the scammers don't, they don't usually yes and because <laughs> they don't know that it's mm. improv, but having them, you know, in, insert something usually just gives me some more material. Some spark of an idea. Sure. Yeah, it's something yeah. to go off of. Even if they're mad, well, I can just feed off of their anger and be like, okay, I'll just keep doing this because they're, they're mad. In this video, Kitboga buys gift cards, but then lets the scammer watch as he, accidentally, redeems the cards into his character's account rather than sending them to the criminal, who is pretty mad. Well, this is so, this is absurd. You don't, don't, don't understand something like this. Uh, Ma'am, you are redeeming okay. it for your own. I won't get it. I won't get it. I won't get it. What do you mean? Ma'am, what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm adding this no! to your cash. No! No, please, no! Do not read him that! Do not read him that! Do not read him that! What's the longest phone call you've had? If I were to just sit in one spot and talk, it's probably something like five or six hours because mm -hmm. I usually would stream for that length of time. And, you know, you get, you get tired. And yeah. It's a long time to sit on the phone. go to the bathroom. Call. I mean, right? <laughs> right. You get, yeah, exactly. But over the course of multiple days or, or weeks, we've had times where they've spent 30, 40. We, the current record is somewhere around 52 hours of phone conversations so you know it adds up um including you say what can, not, we, can we I try did, this again tomorrow i mean is that how it goes basically yeah it's almost unthinkable that a criminal would spend hours and hours on the phone with someone like kit boga why does this technique work so well i'm playing the perfect victim they say something like let's go buy some gift cards at, at target and then I buy the gift cards and I, I come back. Of course, I extend this through all kinds of improv ideas. That whole thing that could have taken an hour, let's say, I've made it take four hours. But I come back at the end of the day. They want their gift cards because on the back they can get that code and then resell the gift cards. Well, they tell me to scratch the gift card and I scratch way too hard. And I'm making, you know, sounds that sound like I got an angle grinder. I'm just really <laughs> going, going at it. And I send them a picture of now I've just completely destroyed this target card. And they get angry, but they would usually still see me as a good target because I went to the store and bought the card. Like they almost got the money. And so then I'll say, well, it's getting late. I'm getting tired. I, I have choir, church choir practice, whatever excuse. And they'll say, well, I'll, I'll call you tomorrow. And it sometimes it's just goes on for weeks and it's just different mishaps and different problems that, that happen every day. Yeah. But, but they always think they're just one, one instant away from, from finally getting money from you. I, could just, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. what I think is interesting about that is that's, that's of course the technique that they use on victims so often. Exactly. Some of the stall tactics he employs involve a lot of creativity. One story is they told me to go to Lowe's and buy gift cards. And then 
I went into the store and I made some sounds like I was shopping and I had my cart out and I was I was putting things in the in the cart and then the scammer says, What are you doing? And I'm like, Well, I, I couldn't find the gift cards, but I know you said to buy three thousand dollars worth of stuff, so I'm I'm putting things in my cart. I'm putting you know and he's starting to get angry because he wants gift cards, not lumber right <laughs> i'm telling him like lumber prices are really getting high so it's it's, it's work. and then i talked to a sales associate and they tell they they said they got a good sale on tubs and i can get a couple tubs in the back of my truck for three thousand dollars and i'm and i say yes and the scammer's screaming because he's like no buy gift cards not not tubs and that's an example of like okay what an absurd situation why why would I think it's appropriate to buy tubs instead of a gift card? But if I can play it right, I know the you know I know the line. If I if he thinks I'm buying something, if he thinks my character believes, well, I was just supposed to spend three thousand dollars at Lowe's, not specifically buy the gift cards for three thousand dollars. Then I then I might be able to put him through a little bit of a, a crazy story. Speaking of crazy stories if you've ever been frustrated by an extended auto warranty call this one might hit you hard good afternoon am i speaking with denver i'm sorry who is this this is the main processing center for your ford f-150 how you doing today mr lewis i'm doing well how are you I'm doing okay for a Wednesday, sir. Your new policy is going to come in. I have your email address. It's havethebestgoats at gmail.com. Is that correct? That's correct. That's me minding my own business when I got a call about my Ford truck's extended warranty running out, which is odd because I don't have a Ford truck. But apparently my grandpa character does because they knew my fake address fake email and pretty much everything else about the character. Okay, I, you okay, called I me. lost you for a second. I, I don't do know if I'm on a list. Sir. So I have Denver F. Lewis. And then uh -huh. what is, are you still in Chicago, Illinois? 60652, baby. I'm just going to play along with it, except every single lie they spew is going to be recorded. And in the end, I'm going to give him a taste of his own medicine. Liberal, sir, I'm trying to do my job, and I've been on the phone with you for two and a half hours trying to help you, sir. But then you keep going off on tangents. And I haven't things. gone off on a single tangent. You just flipped on me asking me how I know your mother and why I'm talking about your mother. I wasn't talking about your mother. I said any. Anybody and God's mother can send an email to someone that means no and holds well, then, no Well, then, if everyone and God's mother can send me an email, send me the email, please. Just send me the email, no, and then we'd be done we with it. Mr. Lewis, I'm not giving you the policy, sir. Denver. I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to disqualify Denver? the vehicle, sir. Why are you yelling so much, sweetheart? It's because this guy is hard to explain. Hey, what did you need about the car? Uh, the VIN, right? V-I-N, the VIN? Uh, the VIN number, okay, yes. Hold on. Yeah, for the, for the Ford, for the F-150. We don't, we don't have a Ford, sweetheart. What are you talking about? We sold it, we have a Prius. Oh my gosh. Um, <sighs> I think I've made him, Mr. Campbell. Okay, so all this wasting time sure does feel good in a schadenfreude sort of way, but that's not all there is to Kit Boga. So the goal of all of this is to, to keep this person occupied, this one person, or whatever, maybe there's a couple, so that they're not actually yeah. stealing money from somebody else. Is, is, is there another goal, a larger goal? Do you, are there other things you try to accomplish with these, uh, with these incidents? Yeah. Yeah, great question. I, and I definitely started off with that goal in mind. It was this, sort of that spark of, well, wow, if I spend 10 minutes on the phone, that's 10 minutes. They're not talking to someone's grandma. And I still, you know, practice that. I still think that's value, valuable. But there, over time, I've learned, well, if I can make entertaining, funny content, like funny stories, people will watch. And then they're learning about these scams. And then they'll share it with their family. I have people who say, "Oh, well, we get together at, you know, Thanksgiving," <laughs> and I and I'm showing my 
the whole family one of one of your videos and now the whole family learns about how these scams work right and, and per, I, then i find out that that's prevented people from getting scammed and then even more so i've realized they will give me really valuable information them being the scammers they'll give me bank accounts bitcoin wallet addresses company names of companies here in the us that they use to launder money through and all of that can be then reported to people here in the U.S. who can actually investigate and, and get those things shut down. When I first started, that wasn't what I thought I'd be doing, but it's it's exciting. Do you work with law enforcement? Do you have do you know of any stories of people getting getting arrested or facing legal consequences because of what you do? Yeah, I use the. I think that usually we pass information over to the right places, but I don't. And I usually don't talk about what does or doesn't happen. And oftentimes I don't find out what does or doesn't happen. I'm going to guess the first time you called Gigantic Bank and said, I have this account that's fraudulent. <laughs> it wasn't like they answered the phone and fixed it, right? So, I mean. No. <laughs> no, it was actually, it's funny you bring that up. It's, it had been quite difficult in the beginning. It was like, what do you tell us? So oh, I'm. Hi, I'm Kit Boga, and mm -hmm. I have a scammer who gave me one of your accounts. And usually the first thing the rep would say is, okay, well, do you have an account with us? And I'd say, <laughs> no, I, I don't. Um, and they're like, well, then why are you calling kind of thing? And eventually, usually if I could get to someone who worked in the fraud department, I could explain things. But now as time has gone on, I just have different contacts and it's easier to get to direct, like, to get right to the people that need to get it instead of. Yeah, I'm so sure that... to explain it every time. <laughs> and over time, Kitboga's relentlessness and those contacts have been able to enact real change. So I think last year we collected something like 200, it was over 200 bank accounts, like U.S. bank accounts that the scammers were using to launder money through or one way or another exploit and, and were able to like communicate with the banks and bank fraud professionals to either get those bank accounts back to victims or shut down the ones that are and investigate the ones that are being used for fraud. We heard plenty of stories where that led to company like sort of shell or companies here in the U S that were working with the scammers being invest investigated. Hmm. And then there was even to me, what was exciting too is they said something like, I don't know, 80% of the bank accounts were victims who had no clue mm -hmm. that their, that their accounts were being used to like launder money. And so we heard tons and tons of those sorts of stories where the banks were able to communicate with those people, get their accounts back, explain what was going on. So that, that's really exciting too. And then more recently, we've been working with a uh, crack in a, one of the major crypto exchanges and working with their fraud team related to Bitcoin wallets. So I think we collected something like 400 or 500 Bitcoin wallets in the past year. And they've been able to get those like shut down or frozen and work with different crypto exchanges. And I'm hope I'm hoping I could even get to the point where we're able to try to recover some of that for people. That's great. And so this is so much more than uh, some yucks for with some friends right yeah it's it's not just it's not just a little bit of su sunday night it calls a scammer for an hour but it's exciting it's it's i'm i'm glad to be doing this it's like the I tell people it's the adventure of my my life so far and i really really have poured my life into it and i i certainly don't regret it can you tell me the funniest thing that's happened to you during this set of shows there's so many things that have happened and it's hard for me to, you know, rank them. But one in particular that I think of a lot is a time where I, I, you know, I can sort of make my voice sound older. Right. And, and I'm telling this scammer that, <laughs> that I'm hooking up a bunch of microwaves in my kitchen to make the, the world's first macro wave with a daisy chain <laughs> you know, 12 or 15 microwaves together and I, and I rig it. So it runs with the doors off and I make it like a seance circle and, and they're all facing the middle that I could like superheat 
you know, make a nuclear reactor or something. And I'm, I'm making this story up. And then his phone is like cutting in and out and popping and really crackly. And so then I start playing that back to him and making my voice get really distorted on the call. So anytime I walked in the kitchen, my voice would break up and glitch and like pitch shift and make crazy sounds. And the scammer believed it. So he's he, every time I would walk in the kitchen, he'd be like, get out of the kitchen. Get out, you're going to get hurt. You're going to, you know. <laughs> Don't don't go in there. There's radiation, or and he like genuinely believed that this was was real life. Got a lot of echo, a lot of oh. noise, but uh, well, yeah, he has a whole and bunch it, of microwaves all daisy changed together, and he's he's trying to create a black hole for science, I guess. Well, oh, that, that is. That is fascinating. Well, it. You know, I don't so want to interrupt but, uh, his hobbies. Moment, it just, it was just when, when like he it. retired, he went through a little bit of a, 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 you know, couple years there where he wasn't really sure what to do with himself, and then he watched this video about microwaves, particularly ones that were made in the seventies, and he has been buying them every chance he gets. He's he's glowing now with this new opportunity and um, my basement is full of microwaves. Well, uh, Ms. Williams, I would suggest you to uh, maintain a distance with those things because microwaves are not really good for your health. Maintain your dis distance a little and cover yourself before you are near the microwaves so that they don't affect your skin and they don't affect your heart and the brain. Right. Okay? Well, I think right. I think he's hoping to create the world's first macrowave or something. I know it's not a mind wave. Why is this so entertaining to people, do you think? Good question. Sometimes I don't know if I know. <laughs> I am not a trained comedian. I, I would, two things come to mind. One, I, I think everyone, this has touched almost everyone, it, sad to say. Almost everyone that I've met in some way, shape, or form has been affected by a scam, whether it's themselves or a family member. You don't have to look very far to find, or you get the calls all day long. So it's a very relatable thing, and it's a very frustrating and annoying, sometimes even worse thing. And then the other element, it ends up, it's <laughs> almost like NASCAR. Maybe you're a huge NASCAR fan. I, myself, grew up um, a, a really close friend of mine their family would get together and watch the races and I I swear they were only there for the crashes is is I'm no sorry one will to say ever admit it. this but it's absolutely true you want to see the crash yeah. yeah and it sounds terrible but that's I swear that's what they did and you know whenever the crash happens everyone's freaking out and going crazy and glued to the TV they got their popcorn bowls and I think that's what some of this becomes too is okay, we're on this call with scammers, but how absurd can this be? And like, when's the crash going to happen? Is, it, is the scammer going to get really, really angry to the point where they're just screaming? And Or, or is, or is Kate going to do something so absurd, like s s say that I accidentally bought Bitcoin car wash tickets instead of a Bitcoin, you know, <laughs> whatever. And, and then this, like, What's going to happen now? Is it is it going to crash or is it going to? Uh, lastly, I would I would say, I personally really like more kind of I don't know if it's awkward or like slapstick type comedy where there's like a like a big inside joke where the scammers think this is real, like right everyone listening and and watching knows I'm not actually I'm. I'm not actually an old man named Richard Andrews who thinks he's inventing crow coin, the world's first crow themed Bitcoin, but, but the scammer does. And so when I'm asking them to do certain things and sing songs or whatever it is, like they think it's real life. And I, I think that adds an extra level of comedy or, or funny stuff. Well, and there's this, cosmic element to it that if the scammer just Googles your name, they would see what they're in the middle of, right? So the world is in on this joke that this one person isn't. Yeah, but yeah, that's an interesting way to put it. Humor, of course, 
often has a deeper point, and it turns out to be a great teacher. I used to do some like public service announcement type videos, or or here's the top ten scams to look out for, and they didn't really get views, and people didn't really share them. But if I do a call like that, where I've got three family members huddled around the laptop that's that's broken, and I come up with absurd, funny stories. People watch and share the videos. I don't know if it's like the the merge of entertainment and education. Yeah, that, that's something I didn't realize right away, but over time has been quite valuable. While he does have a lot of fun working on these videos, Kit Boga says he never forgets that these things really are serious. A friend of mine, their mother-in-law, they they called one night and said, "Kit, I'm here with my friend." She's at the bank. She was about to wire $40,000 to to someone. And like as much as I have fun, like kind of in, in some ways we're like joking around with the scammers. You know, I'm, I'm telling them I'm buying tubs. It's it's hilarious. We're having a good time. But then there's these moments where you you go, this is like real and it's it's devastating. And so this woman, close friend of ours is like, he was about to wire $40,000 and thankfully the bank teller said something was suspicious and, and so that, like, what a hero. Does Kit Boga ever get scared? Maybe at first, a little, but... I later realized that, uh, you know, this, most of the scammers I'm talking to are... How, how would I put it? That Certainly their bosses might be more organized and, and pretty scary individuals. But some of the scammers that I'm talking to on the phone, they're not really tech savvy. They're not, it's not like a mafia movie where this guy is going to come, you know, bust my kneecaps or something, which is how I thought of it initially. Hmm. So I, I, I'm, I'm not as concerned about that, though I do maintain privacy and like I don't, so my real name, surprise, surprise, is not Kit Boga. Uh, that's my username or persona i really don't talk about like where i live and give certain information because i would prefer to keep those things private one the online world scammers are not uh, are it can be scary there's some some bad actors out there let's say that that stalk or harass some of them have have, have tried to do this already who are not scammers and I met, I also do make some scammers angry. So even though I don't think they're going to come necessarily, uh, you know, like a mob video, I don't know. And I, if I make enough of them angry and I make their bosses angry, well, now I might have some issues. <laughs> so sure, I try to yeah. be careful. And there's ways they can hurt you that you might not even imagine. And, you know, and, and... sure. And again, this is why we strongly recommend against trying anything like this, listener. You really could get hurt or hurt someone else. This is your your full time life now, right? Yeah, yeah. And when did you make the leap from I'm not going to be doing my day job anymore? Probably, maybe somewhere 2018, hmm. 2019. I was able to do some like consulting or, or like side stuff for a while, so I could have multiple income streams. And then, but yeah, probably 2018 was like the Sometime in there was, I remember my wife, I actually distinctly remember one of my close friends who, who actually, who's actually now working with me with kid stuff. I, I had said, you know, it'll probably be like a year. I very, very specifically remember <laughs> saying to him, this is a once in a lifetime op- time opportunity. I, I don't know what's going to happen, but right now there are people who want to watch this and it's helping people and I'm able to support my family with it. So I got to try, you know, like I would, I would look back and be bummed that I didn't take the chance to see what happened. And that was 2018. And I said, it'll probably be a year or so. And now it's 2023. And I imagine it'll just keep going for the foreseeable future. So. In fact, Kitboga and his team are hard at work trying to scale up the work. 
If I want to do something to fight back, there is not enough time in the day for me to just talk to all of them myself. So my team and I built a trap that would keep them occupied even while I sleep. Welcome to the Easy Send automated system. Our award-winning platform is set up to allow anyone with a code to easily withdraw and manage funds. The concept's pretty simple. I give a scammer a fake Bitcoin gift card or a receipt and they think it's going to be easy to redeem. In their mind, it's a board game with no obstacles or challenges and free Bitcoin in the end. They've already won. But in reality, my team and I have designed a series of challenges and obstacles that make this literally impossible. Just one last thing. How would you rate your experience today? Goodbye. <laughs> that guy has spent over five <laughs> days playing. I was not expecting that. That's five times 24. We're talking real life days. With all this experience talking to scam criminals, wasting their time, what advice does Kit Boga have about the way they work and about how people can protect themselves? Yeah, I can think of a, a few things. And something I've said for a long time is that every scam, whether it is you are winning the money or you owe money, right? Like whether it's good or bad, whether they're going off of fear or something good, there's a, always a sense of urgency. You can't hang up. You have to listen. You have to act right now. So I, I often try to remind people that it usually doesn't exist in the real world. If you can, if you ever find yourself in a stressful situation like that, where you're on the phone with someone and they're, they're like, do not hang up. You know, you have to, and they're demanding things remember that you can you can always reach out to law enforcement or a lawyer or a family member or tell someone you know okay well give me the case number or give me the account number and I'll call back later I always tell people too to be really careful about allowing someone to connect to your computer it's something where perhaps if you need support it, it should be initiated by you not the other way around but one of the most dangerous things that i'm sure just about any scam baiter you've talked to has probably brought this up the second a scammer connects to your computer uh, it, it can get really devastating really fast access to your financial accounts your your personal files pictures whatever documents you have so certainly not allowing someone to do that is like a really major priority. And then we always talk about education as well, like just trying to stay up to date with things. So uh, those are the sorts of, that's the kind of advice that I've, I've given for years. But he says, relying on education isn't enough. So he's working on software that can help too. If I'm honest though, there's been in the back of my mind, I think of my grandparents. And I think of my grandma and I think if I told her those things, it would be really difficult for how, how can she keep up with these mm -hmm. scams? So we actually, uh, and this is kind of like a, something we've been working on all year. We actually designed and built some, some software that we're, we're launching where it essentially monitors for these remote connections and these different types of scams that happen and just stops them before it even starts. So this hmm. software I put on my mom's computer and if someone's trying to remotely connect and install ultra viewer or these things that the scammers do, it gives her an alert at the bottom right of her computer says, if you're on the phone with someone, they're trying to tell you to install this, hang up right away. It's a scam. It blocks her from installing this software. And then it texts me and says, kid, something's going on with mom. You need to step in and help. Mm -hmm. And I'm really excited about that because I believe it can, can help. And, and there's been so many times where, again, I think my advice is good advice, but there are also so many situations where you can't, you're in a stressful spot you really think that you're talking to Microsoft on the phone. And so you go along with it and, and you're not like, that's how those scams work. So to tell somebody step back, take a breath, you know, call, call your, the police. Well, you're probably not going to do that in a stressful situation. So having some software that looks out for 
all the things I've learned over the past six, seven years. So if I'm talking about this for too long, I, I'm just, I'm no. just really excited about it because I, it, it's like the next evolution of like all these things that I've learned and, and being able to help people. Yeah. I mean, all the behavioral research agrees with everything that you're saying. You can't really give people advice and expect them to follow it 99.99% of the time. The idea of a sort of antivirus software, but for scams is is super interesting. But to me, even more interesting is that text message that you mentioned, because of course the criminal will adapt and say, oh, that pop-up you see, that always happens. You know, this is an exception yep. to that software. But if, if by then you're already calling mom, that helps a ton. Yeah, that's a, that's a big reason why I think that's an essential part of the tool because I've seen good scammers do that. And now would I say that that's normal? Not necessarily. I think the, the average scammer that I talk to won't know how to recover. And if, if they can't mm. connect your computer, they just kind of error does not compute. They don't know what to do with their script and they'll probably get mad and hang up. But I have talked to good scammers who just like you said, they will tell you, oh, I put that there because I work with Microsoft and I wanted to protect you. Uh, now, now turn your computer off and let's head to the bank. Right. So mm -hmm. if I, my family members, my siblings and I get that text that says mom just tried to download ultra viewer. Uh, my, one of my siblings lives really close to my mom and I'm, I'm saying, get in your car and you know, mm -hmm. don't mm -hmm. stop calling her and physically go to her house. Right. Because I know how devastating this stuff can be. This might be a weird last question, but uh, do you ever think about the criminals, the scammers? Yeah. Uh, I mean, what comes to mind when you bring that up is I I've so, so, like sometimes I get, I get angry with them, but I, I do tend to think of them like like humans who have made really bad choices and I, I have had some conversations with scammers who whether they were truthful or not I, I i may not know but have have said like i i don't like doing this and i i'm just having trouble leaving i don't know how to get out uh, once you get in some of these scam organizations will you know they'll get you set up they'll get you the tech you need the laptop the headset and now you're almost like indebted to the boss, right? Because you they gave you all this stuff. Well, you haven't scammed anyone yet. And I gave you $1,000 worth of equipment. <laughs> Even if you want to leave, it, there's like this issue now. So I have had some conversations more heart to heart and and thought, man, this just sucks all around. Like it, as much as this guy's a, a criminal who I believe should right like there should be some justice here there it's not okay i'm not justifying what they're doing in any way there there also have been some moments where i'm like man it's just really sad that that this person got to the point in their life whatever it was whether it was because it was really really bad in their life or they just thought they'd make a bunch of extra money which i do think is the majority of the cases that some of them it's not the easiest thing in the world to to leave and they get they're fear fearful of their own life some scammers have wanted to pass information to me that they think might be hmm. valuable to help investigate these you know like criminal organizations but they're they're afraid because if if anyone ever found out that they're the one who gave the information they're i mean they're thinking like i my life could be at, at risk right so it's tough. It's it's a bummer. Yeah. So we did, we just did an episode. Um, I think it just released last week, but where we, uh, well, a BBC reporter interviewed a, a human trafficking victim. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and so like I've actually, I've been trying to cover some romance related scams and and do some of that, but in the back of my mind there have been, like I I know some of those interviews or read some of those stories, and I think. Oh my gosh! What if I'm chatting with like what if that's who I'm talking to? Mm -hmm. Is not I'm not right like that's the person that's exchanging text messages with me, not not the dude who's pretending to be Microsoft, you know, in his apartment building. Right? It's like sometimes it's tough because I I want to create some some content around those scams to help educate people, but in the back of my mind, you're like, oh, this is a little bit more complicated. 
Like many things in life, it's a bit more complicated than it might look at first blush. But our primary advice here is simple. Just don't talk to online criminals. When you get a call you don't expect, just hang up. Don't engage in any way. That's the best way to protect yourself and your loved ones. If you have been targeted by a scam or fraud, you are not alone. Call the AARP Fraud Watch Network helpline at 877-908-3360. Their trained fraud specialists can provide you with free support and guidance on what to do next. Our email address at The Perfect Scam is the Perfect Scam Podcast at aarp.org. And we want to hear from you. If you've been the victim of a scam or you know someone who has and you'd like us to tell their story, write to us or just send us some feedback. That address again is the Perfect Scam Podcast at aarp.org. Thank you to our team of scam busters associate producer Annalie Embry, researcher Sarah Binney, executive producer Julie Getz, and our audio engineer and sound designer Julio Gonzalez. Be sure to find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. For AARP's The Perfect Scam, I'm Bob Sullivan.